live last week. That was a lot of fun. The movie was great. I've never seen it. It had a very great surprise ending. I you never saw the end. I thought I'd seen the pretty much the whole thing on YouTube. I've watched like an hour and fifteen minutes of it just through YouTube. Did not ever see the ending. God. What a twist! If you haven't seen the movie, you haven't seen the movie until you see the movie. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Even if you've seen clips out of order. Yeah, you got to watch the ending. It's it's amazing. It's a great surprise. But yeah, so we're, next week another movie. Yeah, we had a great time live doing one. Now it's just a little change. It's yeah. going to be on Friday, not Saturday. Friday, and that's Friday fun. at eleven. We didn't get any feedback about what's a better time. But we did get feedback. Oh, we got some There feedback? was an email. You didn't. Re- you you forwarded it. To oh, shit, That's right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. That's not going to work though. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we this week we got to do Friday. We're, we'll do Friday night again at, at uh, 11, 11 p.m. 11 p.m. Central. Central on Friday. Uh, the mm-hmm. feedback was to have it in the afternoon on Saturday, which it's just probably not. That's not really going to work. We could maybe do it certain weeks but just not this week so we, we'll, might, we might experiment but yeah. this Friday we're going to have to do it 11 again I mean it's been working so far mm-hmm. people are coming so we're doing what movie? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the old one the original the movie the first yeah this is like the 80's movie the first movie mm-hmm. so yeah come on join us on that on so tune in all you gotta do is click the link there's only one link you gotta click the link that's yeah. it you, you, don't, you bring, don't... just sit in your take your pants off sit down on your couch Take your chips. Click the link. You don't got to buy the movie. You don't got to download it. You don't got to find it anywhere. Just click the link that we offer on our Twitter or on the w- Facebook or on the website, wherever. And then watch it with us. You'll have a chat in the window. We can all chat about it and joke. Uh, and then we'll fucking have a great time. There'll if you, be a, and if you want to tweet about it, TMNT Live. Will be the there'll be a uh, link to the Facebook invite uh, in the in the YouTube link. No. Uh, and on my website, agree or die, uh, on the, this post. There'll be a link to the Facebook group. You can follow. You can hook up to that and, and get it on your calendar or whatever. So, yeah. I mean, jo- I hope you join us next yeah. week. That'll be great. Oh, I love this movie. I so many good quotes I'm ready for. Good movie. Really excited. So, Welcome to the AVDP, episode 10. Episode 10, anniversary edition. That's, that means 10 weeks have gone by since we started. Yeah. That's ten Ten whole episodes. That's a lot of time. More. That's. I mean, not more than I thought, but I'm surprised there's been that many already. Almost a fifth of the way to a year. Almost a fifth of the way. Yeah, that's some math for you. We gotta do something real special for our year. Yeah, that's fifty-two episodes. Mm-hmm. I'm Yuri. I'm Alex. Thanks for coming. And let me tell you what I did today. I mowed the lawn. I was hoping it's meant we're in Minnesota. It's getting pretty cold out here now. I was really hoping that I would be able to just not have to mow the lawn anymore this year. I wasn't so lucky because it rained for so long. So I had to mow the lawn. Obviously, my lawnmower wouldn't work, so I had to go get the other lawnmower. I use a rider, usually. I had to go get the... I had to use a walking lawnmower like a barbarian. You had to push mow today. Yeah. And you hate your grass. I hate my fucking grass. <laughs> Just It's been a while since we talked about your, gra- <coughs> your grass in the podcast. Yeah, that's, that's, that's how long it's been since I mow my lawn. Wow. Yep. Yeah. And so I had to, like, fucking... I didn't have any gas. I had to go get gas, gas it up. I had to drive to the gas station with my car... Then get gas to drive back to gas up my lawnmower. And to, you, had, you had battery problems in your car? My car had battery. I, I was going to run so many errands today, do so many things. Instead, I did nothing. That's a bummer. It's a real big bummer. Sorry to hear about that, buddy. Oh, I want to say something else. Anybody who is a who is a fan of my Facebook page, which is Facebook slash Agree Die. Agree or Die was taken. Bummer. Some fuck. Oh, well, that's the worst. I'm about to do another giveaway. I do giveaways there for neckties and things. Mm-hmm. I'm about to do another one soon from Severed Ties. He is going to be giving two winners some products. So hop over to my Facebook page and uh, look for it and give me a like. And uh, you can, you know, all you got to do is like send me a photo or whatever. It's really easy. You can win some free free loot. Some swag. Some good swag. It's yeah. fun. I love the term swag for like goodies you get, you know, free goodies. Swag, that's what you get at conferences. Yeah, like a swag bag. Swag bag. It's my favorite. I got a swag bag for you if you win the, con- the contest on my Facebook page. Maybe I will. Uh, so let's start by addressing, we, we had a lot of feedback. Oh, we got feedback. Yeah. On, on the YouTube page. If you watch the video on YouTube, people were commenting on there. And the biggest issue it seems like is, is this, uh, the school, our thing on school lunches. Yeah. People, I was really resonated with some people. So I, I guess I, I at least like to really clear it up. Struck Just a nerve. At least clarify, because I think people don't understand what we were saying. We're not trying to go into a school and say you're only eating tacos for the rest of your life. Like or, I, or paste, or, nutritional or, paste. Yeah, or paste. What I'm all, I'm all I'm saying is that right now, schools are offering a ton of junk food options, and they're just not doing anything good for the kids. And the kids are just wasting a bunch of money on these horrible junk food options, and they're 
contributing to the obesity ep- epidemic in America. Uh, they're just hurting the kids and they're, they're building bad practices. So all we said is like right now, most schools offer like, let's say five, five lunch options. They're usually themed like to like a food type. All we're saying is get rid of the a la carte, leave the five or maybe even expand. In fact, give more options, get eight in there now. Cause you don't have to waste time with a la carte and just make them nutritional, make a balanced meal. Mm-hmm. And I'm not the one saying only pick foods I like. You're not saying only vegetarian options. No, they get a real person, a nutritionist, who's yeah. going to pick the five options, and then they'll just not offer any really bad... What's the benefit of giving kids donuts? Zero. Yeah. Well, I mean, the benefit is the school gets to... I mean, let, let's It's be, money. It's money. Let's be real. It's yeah. a complete cash grab from the school. They just want money. So, like, how can we get money? How about we sell candy to kids? Genius. I mean, that like that's ridiculous. And, and I don't have... You know, people might ask, where's the money going to come from? Look, the schools are already strapped for cash. I'm fully aware. Like, I'm not I'm not saying here's the solution. Here's all the, yeah. the steps you have to take. But I'm saying this is a problem. And I think the the solution should be that we should make, you know, help, give kids better healthy options. Mm-hmm. It sucks that the options are trashy garbage food or delicious, you know, fatty foods. Mm-hmm. I just want the healthy options to be actually healthy and actually enjoyable to eat. That's all I'm saying. That's what we're saying. So I, I don't know. People are saying this total, totalitarian view and are crazy. Like we're out control. Where's the freedom? Foods. We're taking freedoms away. It's yeah. like, look, schools need to lead by example, you know? And one of the examples I lead by is proper nutrition. That they teach kids, they you go to health class and they teach you don't eat sugar. Then they let you have all the sugar in the world. Yeah. You know, and, and, and look, you can still bring a school lunch if that's, if like, if you're like, oh, they bring your own made, donuts. Bring your own donuts. BYOD. Bring your own food. Yeah. Uh, bring. You know, you can still eat whatever you want at home, whatever your parents let you eat, but just stop supplying. Like, if schools already control you in a lot of ways, like you can't, even if you're 18, you can't smoke cigarettes at school Mm -hmm. on the campus. They say it's a parent's responsibility to do this, not the schools. It's like I disagree. I mean, it's both people's responsibility. I mean, yeah, I'd like it if the parents did it, but we know they don't. You know, parents don't do that. They don't control it. Some do, some don't. But like, I'm not gonna just let kids get fat because they get all the donuts they want. There's there's a balance. I mean, everything has to have a, have, have a balance, and there's a balance between choice and you know pr- doing what's best for the for America and for the future of the kids and for everything. And the balance here has to be that we need to provide healthy options and take away some of the choice, which is just garbage food. Make make healthy food fun. Yeah, I don't know. I I think you can still get plenty of enjoyable options. You can still have some dessert stuff in. You know, put a choco taco with a lunch option. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't have to be. The problem is if you're gonna give me the option, I'm just gonna buy the choco taco. Mm-hmm. So, I don't. That's how you love choco tacos. Yeah, I really do. I kind of miss them. I want to throw. Can them you buy them. those? Yeah, I, I feel th- like I've never seen them. Uh, I think I feel like you still you still see them here and there. Hmm. You got to track them down though. Uh, while we're we talking about high school, I got to thinking. I got a little. We got a little segue shot here because yeah, this is a shot. clear high school conversation. Hmm. Imagine what high school is like right now. Uh, it must be so weird, because everybody has a smartphone. Mm-hmm. Like, there was a time where maybe some had it and they could ban it. They can't ban smartphones anymore in school. I can't imagine that. No, I, I, I remember, you know, we're a little bit older, obviously. I'm When I was in high school, cell phones were becoming more, like, pretty much everybody over, let's say, in 10th grade and above had a cell phone. Right. So it was becoming an issue. Right. Um, they, were, they weren't smartphones, so they were just, just cell phones. regular cell phones. Yeah. So, like, if your phone went off in class, the teacher would take it until the end of class. Mm-hmm. Those were the kind of the policies. Yeah. But yeah. now, especially now, I mean, even then... Like, they take your phone, whatever, you know, you get it back. Now it's like, the phones are $500, you know. You can't take the phone anymore. No, and parents are not going to stand for that. Right, much. teachers can't be taking the phones. Yeah. And then every single kid has a phone. They can text constantly with each other. And then here's what weirds me out the most. Mm-hmm. They all have Twitter. They all have Facebook. Like, when I was in high school, there was no such thing. Yeah. I had to talk to people in the halls. Now everybody has Facebook, Twitter, and all this Instagram. You, like, know what everybody in your class is doing all the time. You could follow your entire class on Twitter. You know what they're all doing always. Isn't that weird? What, what, what's kind of funny to me is it gets people in trouble. Like when I went to a party in sure. high school, you know, I, I could go to the party and that'd be whatever. I'd be at the party, I'd leave. As long as the cops didn't come, we were fine. But now it's like people are getting busted on yeah. because they're like tweeting at people like, oh, I saw you at the party last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, people's parents are like, well, I, I, I know you were at this party. Like, yeah. I, I, I follow this kid on Twitter. That's crazy. And you could be drinking. People take a picture of you while you're drinking. Yeah, and it's going to be it everywhere. Up, then you're, take, you're the one in the photo. I forgot where this it's, was, but there was some crazy somebody shit. broke into like a person's house and threw a big party there and did like thousands in damage. This is like in some other state. Okay. This isn't around here. That's ballsy. 
I mean, yeah, but the shit happens. Like, people will do this to people. It's crazy. I know. Whatever. They broke into some, some guy's house. Like, they knew he was out of town. Uh-huh. And they threw a party there and they did all, all kinds of damage. Took a bunch of pictures. And they took a bunch of pictures. They posted on Twitter. And all the cops, like, tracked all these people down. They're just like, well, here's here's you drinking, you know, shots, doing a, a beer bong in the fucking kitchen. So it's like, it's crazy how, how that's changed. But I'm, I'm obviously not... I don't live in that world. It's crazy. I want to know if you've got, if we've got high school yeah. listeners, tell us what it's like. Can you have your phone in class? Can you be like, oh, I'm taking notes on my phone? Well, do you follow every person in your school on Twitter? My, my guess is they probably can't do that. But like my little brother, I got little half brothers, you know, and he has an iPad through his school and some of the nicer school districts. Like, I don't think Egan's doing this. Got it. This idea makes me but sick. But some of the nicer ones, they give you an iPad. That's absurd. And you can just, you have it. Like they have they have it locked and certain stuff, but he's like a smart kid. They got smart kids. They, they just break it. it. Yeah, yeah, they I, I read it. an article like in California, they're giving kids iPads. They like immediately cracked it, watching porn on it, like in two seconds. Yeah, and it's... But even that's whatever. They can, I don't give a fuck to watch porn on it. What I care is like... How do you manage a classroom like that? Kids, kid, they'll break them. They'll break them and they'll steal them. You know, like, here, you already have an iPad. You just take it home and then report it stolen. And now what? Well, they're taking it home. I think they got tracking numbers. I know they've got, like, he's talked to me a little bit about it. They've got ways to figure out if you're doing something wrong with it, if you've tried to sell, you know, sell it, if you've stolen it, whatever. They've got ways to track it down. What if you just break it? Well, if you break it, I guess, I don't know, they, they might possibly do one replacement that can make you pay a little bit, or you just don't get an iPad anymore. I should ask him about that. Yeah, ask but, what happens if you break it. But I yeah, I'm interested to see. I don't know much about what technology is like in schools nowadays. I'd be curious to know. Yeah, it's a- anybody who's out there weird. in an American high school, uh, tell us a little bit about what your district's like. What you know, are you in a well-off district, a little bit poorer? Uh, what kind of things they do? What kind of tools they implement? How they deal with cell phones? It's got to be weird. Oh, well, weird for us, normal for them. It's got to be yeah, for them it's normal, but yeah. that's to me it's crazy. If I could, like follow my whole class on social media all the time, it'd be like so different. My my little brother always makes fun of me because like I'll post me on Instagram and I'll be like, oh sick, twenty likes, and he's like, yeah, I posted this picture of some shoes I bought, three hundred likes, because everybody in his class follows them and they just yeah they just see a picture and they're like like it's just second nature. It's a very different. Yeah. That was interesting to me is he was making fun of me because he's like, yeah. why doesn't everybody like this? Well, we come from a different personality of it where it's like, well, do I actually like this Do you actually like it? Yeah, you yeah. don't like... It's not like, I saw this, therefore I like it. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. very interesting. That was interesting to me. That, so. is, that is a weird thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so, this might be a... It might or may or may not be a segue. Probably not. But it's about kids. Okay. It's about naming your children. Mm-hmm. Okay. It, there used to be a time where you just name your kids whatever you want, your grandfather's name. Nowadays, you got to have the social media presence. Everybody, especially kids, are going to have to have one, you know? Okay. It, it pays to have a unique name. You think parents are thinking this through? and they're... They should. I think they're not thinking this through. You're saying but I think they, they should. should be thinking it through. Okay. If your name is John Smith, if you name your, your kid John Smith right now, that's a real shitty name for him. Oh, you're so basic. Yeah, it is basic. Mm-hmm. And the problem is, here's, here's what, okay. If somebody, you want people to be able to find you if they want to, I think. It's good for your career, you know, like later on in life. I actually think it's the opposite. You don't want to be found. Well, look at all the people I know who are looking for jobs will either delete their Facebook or they'll uh, change their name in some way so that they're harder to find on Facebook. Because you don't want anybody finding you. You don't want to, if they if they find you on Facebook, it increases the risk that they will disagree with something you have. Like when you go to an interview, you present your best foot forward. But anything on Facebook, even if it's you know fine, like if it's not uh, offensive or whatever, but they just don't agree with it, that could hurt you in the long run. So yeah, I, I know yeah. most people are trying to hide it. Well, okay, I mean, Facebook's not the same though. Facebook, like. If I have a website that's a port, like a portfolio website, like mm-hmm. I want to have a website that's like my resume. Okay. I want people to Google Alex Krasny and find that site. Well, that's that's different. For, well, than most it's of different. Them. But yeah. if my name was John Smith, I'd have, I wouldn't have that option. They would never find John Smith's portfolio. Mm-hmm. There are too many John Smiths. If your name is regular, first off, you're never going to be able to be, be your name at Twitter or your name at Facebook or your name at any site that's ever made now. It's social media and like social sites are being more and more popular. LinkedIn. You know, you want your name to be the page. Like, I want to be Alex Krasny on Twitter. You know, luckily, there's not that many Alex Krasny's, so I can get it. But if your name is something, you know, very common, good luck. You know, it's, it's annoying. AlexKrasny.com. I own that domain. you got to buy your domain right away. You don't want somebody else buying it, you know? I, I guess I just don't think everybody's thinking the same way. Like, not everybody's trying to be... Like, you're in a very unique position where you're trying to get your name exposure. Yes. Right? Like, I'm not trying to get my name exposure. Yeah, but you don't have to. But most people don't. But but you're saying that you should always be thinking this when you name a kid. I think you. This is this was never something you never had to think about this. But now it is a factor. It's going to be more important, like to be able to be searched for and so found. these these celebrities with the weird names for their kids, they're on the cutting edge. They're the ones who are thinking ahead. They are. I yes. Yeah. 
I would think they are actually. Like you, you know like that uh, motion inspector. Yeah, inspector pilot. Right. Yeah. yeah. Motion inspector. Uh, you know, pilot inspector. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis just had a kid. Yeah, I didn't know that. They named it Wyatt. 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 It's a girl. Wyatt. Wyatt Kutcher. Yeah. Wyatt Isabel Kutcher. Okay. So like the like Wyatt Earp, the cowboy. Yeah. That's a pretty unique name. Sure. Don't yeah. No problem. Absolutely. See, so they're they're good in your book. Yeah, I like it. I mean, you don't have to utilize it. Like if you don't mm-hmm. want to have a big profile, you don't have to. No. But that option should be available no, to well, you. Well, can you just change your name? Anybody can change their name legally. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You can. Yeah. And then you'll have whatever. You it's want. a pain in the ass to change your name though. It is. I, I know for a fact. I'd rather just name your kid something you know, and you don't get weird, but just think about it. Like mm-hmm. you know, maybe give it a cool name. Yeah, I mean, I hope most parents want a, a, an interesting name for their for their kids, but there's just too many things to think about. There's too many. You, you if you want to run down this road, then teachers and parents getting classes. You know, uh, yeah. maybe well, like for me, like my growing up, teachers pronouncing my name was a nightmare. Anybody pronouncing my name is a nightmare. Ma- I, mail would get lost because they wouldn't spell my last name right on stuff. It's a horror story, huh. and nobody spells my name right now. They all spell it. The, my Twitter is Yuri with a Y because everybody still spells it with an I. You know what I mean? I wonder why that is. I don't know. Autocorrect or like because it's more famous? I mean, the fa- the most famous Yuri has a Y, right? Yuri Gagarin, the I, space guy. I thought, I thought he was an I. No. I, I, I don't know. I thought it was an I. But the point is, look, it, I know if I meet somebody and I, I'm writing on their Facebook, I look at their, like if it's a name that might be spelled different ways, I will look and be, and Sarah, for example. If it's a Sarah with an H, I don't leave the H off just because I'm lazy. Like for me, it happens all the time. I don't get it. Like, am I immune from this common courtesy of just looking to see how you spell my name? My name? Like, people will write on my Facebook and they'll spell my name wrong. That blows my mind. My name's right above where you're typing. That one's crazy to me. Did you not even glance up? Like, yeah, that's dumb. Yeah, my my boss. Two years I've worked for this job. Two years has yet to spell my name with a Y. <laughs> it's crazy. And I I always, what's funny is when I respond in an email to her, I say I spell it. I go Yuri. And I'm not trying to like point it out to her. I just well, you know whatever. You kind of are, but you're not. Well, I always that's how I always sign my email. Yuri. And she'll write me back and she'll go, hey, Yuri, with an I. It's like, so funny. So, I, I don't know. I mean, if you're having kids, if you're having kids, think about it. You think, are very think unique. Think about it. Yeah. Well, I th- it's important to have yourname.com. I think that's important. I do like the idea of having a cool cool name for your kid. Not yeah, weird, but it, it's cool. not, Yeah, it's not even just about cool. It's just yeah. one that isn't common because, you know. What's your favorite name for kids? Have you ever thought oh, of this? Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean. Do you ever feel pressure to name your kids a Russian name? Or a name that can work with Russian I feel pr- I, I put that pressure on myself. Kind of, yeah. I don't right? feel that pressure from anybody, but I, I put it on me. Like, I will eliminate a name in my head because I'm like, well... It's not Russian enough. It's not Russian enough. My, my, my whole family would be weird and it would kind of go against... It wouldn't work with my last name either. Yeah, your last name's tough. It's more too Russian. It's a tough one. Yeah. Like, I like the name Mateo a lot. I think that's a cool name. Mateo. Well, Native American. No, it's not. It's like Italian or something. Maybe? Uh, sounds smells Native American to me. I don't know where you get that from. Just feels that way. Monte Teo? Is that what you're thinking of? You're thinking uh, of sure. Whatever. But it's a, I think it's a cool name, but I would never name my kid that because it'd be like, my parents would be like, what the fuck are you doing? Why don't you get a real Russian name? name Boris. I want to name my kid Elixir. Elixir. It's a, it's a name that isn't Russian, but it sounds like it could be Russian. Well, yeah, it can mean just the word Elixir, mm-hmm. but it could yeah. be male or female. Mm-hmm. You can call him Elix, like Alex, but Elix, a little futuristic. Yeah. Or like, you know... I guess that's about it. Elix. That's a weird or name. Eli, a unique name. Or Eli. Oh, okay. Elixir. I, I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm kind of okay with names. Actually, I have, a, I have a quick tangent about names. I like it. If you are, like, a, let's say your parents named you Tom, right? Thomas, for example. And you your whole life you've been Tommy. And then someday you're just like, uh, no, don't call me Tommy. Call me Thomas. Thomas. Like, you need to stick with what work, like what people call you. Like don't, like you you present a certain name. Don't change it throughout your life point. I guess. My, well, my when point. you're a kid, you could be Tommy, but when you grow up, you gotta be, have an adult name. Yeah. Okay. No but, one's taking Tommy seriously. Yeah. Thomas. Thomas. That's when you're an adult. Or Tom. Sure, Tom's fine. Maybe I'm maybe I'm thinking the opposite. My my point was the opposite. That I want. <laughs> I fucked this up. What? I fucked this up. Bad. <laughs> no, I don't. That's, no, that's right. I fucked this up. I don't want people. Like forcing a Tommy on you. Like, oh, like, okay. Like when you're young, you can be Frankie. But when you're older, you should like adjust to like your per- one your personality, depending on what your personality's like, and two what your age is. So like if you're the kind of person who is just seems like a Tommy, you're more fun, you're goofy. Like you're not a, a Thomas. A Tommy, you're, a Thomas is too formal for you. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Then you should stick with Tommy. Like Tommy is just what you go by. Wh- whatever. If you're at work, have people call you Tom or Thomas. But like your friends, you should still be Tommy. Don't force it. If your personality is like a fun, loving, kind of Tommy-looking guy. 
You don't get it. You really fucked that up. I fucked that up. I mean, I, <laughs> my point my point is the same, but I didn't get it right. I did fuck that up. You're, you, uh, Can we edit that out? You missed. Right? Uh, no, we're not editing that. Yeah. Out. Uh, let's move on. What do we got? Okay. Well, okay. Here's what I want to talk about. Mm. Well, let's talk. Uh, this is okay. We're talking about this right here. The gaming triangle. We're off our game today. I want to do it. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna talk about this thing I have. This is a, a kind of a theory I, I invented myself, and I want to just kind of talk about it because I think it's interesting, and I'd like to get discussion going. It's called the gaming triangle. Which is a way to classify, you know, I made it specifically for fighting games. You made this up. I made this up. But I, I've la- then I've started thinking, and it applies to pretty much every game that, like, there's a competitive game that's p- per one-on-one, or, or player, one player play. It's not a team game, but a, but a game. Mm-hmm. So here's how it works. Imagine a triangle, okay? And every point of the triangle are three things. Execution, management, and strategy. Those are the three points. In the very middle of the triangle is zero, and then the very peak of the triangle is 100 in all three different triangle pieces. So each game has three points on this triangle. Mm-hmm. They, on each of those elements, they have one, zero through 100 on a scale, and then you draw that into a triangle. So there's a line from the middle to each of the corners. Yes. So okay. it's a radar graph. It's a radar chart. That's the way I envision it. So it's a triangle. In a triangle is a different triangle that's drawn depending on how slanted it is is what the game has in I've it. seen this in games. I mean, this is, yeah, th- this visual, this graphic. You've not seen this in games. Not this exact point, but what I'm saying is like that visualization of you have certain skills. Oh, yes. Yeah. Like football has it, like running and, and catching. and they're Yeah, like, yeah. Or soccer play. Yes. So it's like that. So let's mm-hmm. take, for example, chess. Okay? Management. No, okay, let me tell you what, what these mean. Execution is how hard it is to play the game. Like how much skill it takes to execute in the game. So in a game like chess, there is no man, uh, no execution. Because you just move... Um, you move a piece. Like the only way to fuck up execution in chess is to like, knock a piece over. It could be synonymous with effort. No, effort because that's like mental. It's like skill. Like like dexterity, maybe. So tell me more about execution. That it, it's, it's how difficult it is to implement what you, what you want. Like like how to how to do what you want to do. Okay. That's how hard it is. In chess, it's very easy to do what you want to do. You just move a piece physically. In like Street Fighter, you have to do a Hadouken. You got to make the motion. If you can't do the Hadouken motion, no matter how like well you understand when to do it, you can't execute. So what about like let's say I'm playing a basketball game. Okay. And I want to shoot the ball. Yeah. It's just B. Like I hit B. Easy then. That's easy execution. That, on that move, yeah. If that if that's easy, that's easy. That game okay. has a low execution score. Got it. Okay, management is when you manage resources, like uh, managing minerals and gold in StarCraft, you know, whatever. Managing a, a life bar, if if it has any kind of, like Mortal Kombat, that that has no management, because all it zero. has it is zero, because all it has is a life bar. But your only level of management is to pr- preserve it. Like you don't make any choices about it. You don't decide where to spend your life bar. Well, the newer ones have like super bars. Super bars, absolutely. So that's management. They added management the to X-ray. it, yeah, because you choose when to use these things. Combo breakers. That's okay. So that's management. Yeah. And then strategy, of course, is like how much how much strategy it takes to play the game. Chess has a lot. Chess is all strategy. Chess has no management. You manage nothing. Mm-hmm. It has no execution. It's really easy to execute in chess. The hardest part is coming up with a strategy. Now, would you say now some of this is a tune and play style? Like if you're somebody who, let's say, a fighting game. You can have a lot of strategy if you want, or you can be a button masher and then you have no strategy. Yeah, this is more on a competitive level. Like you're not going to button mash when you're really trying to play. So let's say, so when in your triangle, you're looking at the the peak peak players. Like in the peak scenario, you're looking how, at the way the game's intended to be played. I guess you that, can button that, mash. That's a good. I like okay. You I'm can button mash in you know any game, mm-hmm. but that's not you're not really playing the way the game's intended to be played. Yeah. So let's so let's look at it in Mortal Kombat. Let's take Mortal Kombat. We've all played it. We're talking about one. Old the game school. has no management, has fairly easy execution. I mean, you got like back, back B, you got, you know, down forward, whatever to do your freeze. It's easy. Let's say 20. And then strategy, it, it's got a little bit, like 30. It's not very, I land as many uppercuts as possible. That's Mortal Kombat. So that is a simplistic game. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's compare that now to the Naruto game we have. This game has a pretty easy execution, I would say. Moves are very easy in this game. You just push YB, you know. It has a good amount of strategy. There's a lot of different things to do. But it has a whole ton of management. In this game, you're managing a chakra bar, a substitution bar, your support bars, and your items. There's a lot of shit going on in this game. So there's a lot of management, a fair amount of strategy, and not that much execution. Which is very different from a game like Marvel vs. Capcom, which has a ton of execution. 
a ton. And then, you know, a little bit of management with a super bar. And then, you know, a good amount of strategy. Fighting games have about the same amount of strategy, I would say. They're not, like, more or less. Mm -hmm. But this, so I, I came up with it with fighting games. Because then when you look at the triangle, the one game isn't better or worse than another, depending on how big it is. That's not what it's about. Because you might just not like management. Maybe you don't like it. It's it's kind of a good way of having a discussion about games. It is. It's a, it's a universal language in which you can discuss games. It's that. Yeah. And what, I, what I'm doing with it is... Sorry, dog. Dog. It, on the back of, say, Mortal Kombat 10, on the back of the box, they put this, okay? And then it has a triangle on it, and you can see where the where it peaks. And you, you as, you know, you're a guy, you go, I like games with a lot of strategy and a lot of execution, but not a lot of management. Or I really hate a lot of execution in games, because they take too long to learn. So I'm looking for a game with not that much of that. So you can quickly have a snapshot of how the game feels without actually having to play it first with this triangle. You know, it's not better or worse to have more execution. I like that a little bit better than a lot of the current uh, rating systems. Like if you go on like IGN back in the day, I'm not now, but like a lot of video game sites review a video game. It's like graphics, sound, mm. uh, gameplay, replayability. Yeah. Well, like that tells me some about the game, but it, it doesn't really tell me what I want to know. Like nowadays, there's so many games out there. I want a quick a quick hand mm -hmm. for is it for me? Right. I kind of like that. So I you know I what think, you like. I, I think it could be expanded on. I think so too. But I like your idea. Yeah, this, so I've been thinking about this. And, you know, and it's a little difficult to quantify everything. I mean... It is a very objective. Like, yeah. what is 100 strategy? Like, yeah. What game has that? But what game has 100 management? You just that's what you're talking about anything. How do you give a movie three stars? When you yeah, that? I mean, it's all obviously, you know... But it's whatever. not bad. I it's think... a cool system. I've been thinking about it a lot and it applies to everything. You know, when I, when I, when I go into... Uh, this one? Our picks of the week. Oh, picks. Maybe I'll, I'll give it a try and see... See how it applies. Yeah, let's give it a try. That'd be a good one. That'd be a fun time. Let's see. Let's check the time real quick. I think we're fine. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we can do what we can hit one more. Let's get Ebola going. So a lot of you probably know, and this I'm guessing we're gonna get a lot of feedback on this one probably, but uh, <laughs> Ebola is kind of a hot topic right now. We love now. our feedback. Yeah, Ebola is kind of a hot topic right now, and uh, I'm I don't I guess I don't know how, where to even begin with this, but people are really scared that Ebola is gonna come to the U.S. There, the whole world. I'm scared. There's going to be a huge Ebola outbreak, and it's going to be a nightmare scenario, apocalypse, whatever. I My stance is I want to kind of calm everybody's nerves a little bit on that, from my opinion. I'll, obviously, I'm not a doctor. I haven't done a ton of research on this. I, I could probably do more. My initial reaction, this is kind of what I want to get, get here. Uh, this is a very serious thing. I, obviously, I, I hope that there is no any kind of Ebola outbreak here in the U.S., that and I, I don't want to use the term outbreak. Outbreak, I think, is a, is a loaded term. There isn't an Ebola spread here in, in areas of the U.S. I don't want it to become a regular disease here. But I also think that people need to calm down a little bit. Like, I had a person I, I work with who was freaking out about it, just saying, uh, I don't want to touch anybody. Like, I'm, I'm very nervous about it. Kind of joking, but, like, also kind of, kind of serious, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, here's a couple things. Yes, Ebola has a very high death rate right now. But the reason it has a high death rate in part is because the the area you see Ebola in is Africa. And a lot of these like smaller African villages and towns and, and countries that don't have good medical care, that don't have proper uh, hospitals, and you've got these people who are not being treated properly and they're dying from it. But like Ebola is actually a very treatable, there's no cure yet, I don't want to say that. But the, the reason most people die from Ebola, it's like an immune disease. It's, an, it's a disease that attacks your immune system and gets you sick. Mm -hmm. But if you're given proper care proper fluids a lot of people just get dehydrated and they die because they're you know pooping and di diarrhea and they're vomiting and they can't get enough uh, fluids in their body to, to sustain themselves but in america like if you got proper care you're getting people quarantined and you're giving them fluids in a hospital most people will probably be okay i mean that's that's kind of what i've been reading is that the other thing too is that it's spread by bodily fluids right so it's not airborne like it's not gonna come here and then all of a sudden you're walking through the airport and you get it like that movie outbreak yeah, that yeah. movie outbreak that fucked me with up the, with the monkeys. I know, and I know. I think movies, it was about this situation. Pretty much, it, it's kind of based on that idea and taken to the, the extreme. But you need to literally semen, blood. It's a lot like AIDS. It seems like it attacks your HIV, immune system. Yeah, it's very much like it's HIV. It's transferred by fluids. But part of the difference is when you have HIV, you know, most people won't know. You might not even know. Well, it takes a long time to get. Yeah, this one's fast. Yeah. So if you have Ebola, if somebody has Ebola, it's very visible right away. They're they're sick. They're well. It doesn't help me if I have it. Well, that's my point, is that it's not going to, it doesn't have the same kind of spread concerns. Because you know you have it. You're because you know away. you have it. And there's, it dies very quickly when it's out of the body. So if like I pee, yes, that toilet water now has Ebola. 
but it will die within a minute. You know, like it, it can't survive outside of a human host. So if somebody gets Ebola, they're not going to be walking around kissing people and bleeding everywhere and giving everybody Ebola. They're going to know they have it, go to the hospital, get, get quarantined. Sorry to graphic image here. Gross. Get quarantined, and then they're not going to give it to anybody. All right. So it's still an issue. I mean, it can still happen, but it is, it is less... Probably not in America. It's not, it shouldn't be as much... Of a, I don't think it's apocalyptic. I, I hope that everything goes well. I hope it doesn't become an issue here. But I don't think it's something where you need to be freaking out, panicking, going, oh my God. Well, what really bothers me is the lack of, of uh, sympathy. Like People are like, don't let these people... Like the, the people who got sick, the American citizens who got sick over in Africa treating people, they're like, don't let them come here. We don't want Ebola spreading. Well, I was like, don't, they're quarantined. They're fine. They're going to be treated. And they came here and they survived. They were fine mm. because they got treated. You know? Yeah. So it's like, have some sympathy for these people. Care about them. Don't freak out that just bringing a person with Ebola to the country is going to cause everybody to get it. It's it's a little more complicated than that. Uh, again, I'm not a doctor. I don't have a, a fully informed viewpoint. I've done some research, but I think it's it's a little overblown. I think don't freak out and panic and build a bomb shelter is all I'm saying. Mm. So you had some some stuff you. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty I'm pretty scared of Ebola, man. I don't like uh, weird diseases. And that's fine. I don't like them because you can't see them. I don't like that shit. You know, I like to deal with stuff that I understand. I don't like when microbes get in my body, start messing me up. No matter how strong I am, the microbes get in there, start eating my heart. It's almost like when you're in the o- when you're in the ocean and you can't see what's beneath you, and then a shark comes and gets you, and you can't fight it because it's too strong. You can you. fight a shark. You can try. I'd rather fight a shark than fight Ebola. Yeah. Well, maybe. I, I don't mean to derail you here. But I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't. Now I'm thinking about it. Well, it's my point is that it, it's very. Would I rather fight a shark or Ebola? I heard if you punch sharks in the gills or poke them in the eyes, they really get upset and leave. Well, most sharks, the reason they bite you is because they think you're something else. And once they take a bite and they realize it's not, they're not, you're not. I don't a want them biting me though. I don't well, wanna, I, I'm not going to give him a taste. I don't either. I'm going to punch. That's him why I don't go in the ocean. I'm going to punch that bitch in his gills. Well, you're not going to. He's going to be sorry. They're coming up from the bottom. Look, I saw this thing. This thing going around on Facebook and Twitter. People are like, "This is meme. It's a meme going around." It says scientists say don't panic about Ebola. Everybody panics. Scientists say you should panic about climate change, and nobody nobody cares. I I say don't panic about either. You, I know you're saying that. Yeah. And I'm saying, okay, the, there's a big difference there, okay? It, the difference isn't like, I mean, the implication is, is what? That people only sometimes trust scientists? I don't get what they're saying here. It's it's like that, have you seen the, the Joker meme from The Dark Knight? Where it's like, yeah. do this and nobody freaks yeah, out. Know, yeah, the it's, it's the same. I know, I but know. I don't get that. It's weird. They're like, people are picking and choosing what to panic about. It's a bad meme. It's, it's, it's a stupid it's, meme. It's, it's, it's a stupid sentiment. It's What's going on here, though, is here's the difference between Ebola and climate change. Here's why I'm concerned about one and not the other. I'll tell you this right now. Because no matter how bad climate change gets, it will probably not ever kill me in my lifetime or in my children's lifetimes. It might make it colder in Minnesota. You know, it might make a tornado somewhere. But, like, it's not going to kill me. So I'll, I'll, I'm concerned about climate change in, in a very passive way. Like, okay, well, we should do our best not to pollute. And we should do our best to make sure Antarctica doesn't melt. But really, it's not really going to affect me that much. Whereas if I get Ebola tomorrow, it's going to affect my life a lot. I think part of it, too, is that one you have more control over and one you have less control over. You, you mean which you, one's I one? have more control over climate change. I can do something to reduce my carbon footprint to help climate change. Oh, you can take action. Yeah. I can't do anything about Ebola. Yeah. So I think that's maybe they're just saying, like, you guys should do something about that. Well, it's just not worth panicking about. There's no I, panic. I don't think you should panic about either one. Yeah. I, I think you should be passively concerned about... Both. No. Passively concerned about Ebola. Okay. Actively concerned about. And that means what? Reducing your footprint? Yeah. Just be be aware of that you have a carbon footprint that, you know, you can, like, we talked about Teslas last week. Part of the reason I'm interested in getting a Tesla someday is because it's going to reduce my carbon footprint. It's going to help. I think I think the more people buy Teslas, the better it's going to be for the environment. And hopefully global warming will be less of a problem. Also, so I'm not freaking out. I'm not running out to buy, to get take a loan to buy a Tesla. But it's something I'm thinking about. Also, if help. you want to reduce your carbon footprint, yeah. you should become a vegetarian. That's a, that's a fair point. I'm doing my part. I'm uh, doing can, way more than you pieces can, of shit. Can, can you explain that though? Because so you're just saying it. I'll explain it because uh, feeding all the billions of cows and all the all the all that goes into that is huge huge pollution, methane emissions. Doesn't it take huge. methane emissions to farm and do get yeah, it does. plow and agriculture? Yes, but the, like if we didn't eat cows, there would be like 1% cows compared to now. Like, the only reason the cows exist at all is because we eat them. Mm-hmm. And there's billions of cows constantly farting and shitting and being transported and being fed. That all would, def- would just go away. And they would not, there would not be a billions of cows. Cows make more 
emissions than cars. Like, like, like the the bad shit ca- cars give off. Mm-hmm. Cows are worse for the ozone than cars are because of how many cows there are. So like they're they're carbon they're, dioxide. They're, they're, they're shit. They're okay, farts yeah. and they're gas they make off that that fucks the ozone. Is that a true fact or you just? Well, I haven't looked it up. That's a true fact as far as I've been told. I mean, I mm-hmm. I knew that was a fact a while ago. I haven't looked it up recently, but that's that's, that's, that's something that's true. So look at you, like yeah, that's I mean. Fair point. If that's something you're, if you're really concerned about climate change and that's what spurs you to be a vegetarian and that's going to help, then that's right. Right. But yeah, little things you do, but do be, your part. Be actively concerned, but don't panic about either. I mean, panicking's not going to help. You don't need to panic. So, what's that help? So, our next topic is something Krasny wanted to. Yeah, so I thought of this. Uh, back when Portal came out, you might have the game Portal, where, you know, you uh, use a gun that shoots a portal. Such a great game. And you can go through the portal to come out the other portal, blah, blah, blah. Well, you got to know. So there's there's a, a blue portal, orange portal. You you shoot them both. Once you shoot a new portal, the old portal disappears. I think that's important for the Yeah, so you can have two portals only ever. And yeah. then if you go through one, you come out the other. And that's what it is. So we're thinking, if you really had one, let's say you. I'm going to ask you right now. You found one. I got a, I got a portal gun. What would you do with it? Uh, I do. Here's the main thing I'd probably do with it. I would set up a portal at my work and a portal at my home, mm-hmm. and I would just have that be the thing, right? So I'd, I'd, I'd leave work the day, and I'd shoot a blue portal. I'd get home, and before I went to bed that night, or, me, or no, I'd wait until I woke up, because I don't want to be coming through from my work fucking with me at home, you know? So I'd wait till I woke up. I'd wake up, oh, okay, shoot the other color, color portal, and then jump through and go to work, and then close them up. And there I am. No travel time. No traffic. No basic bitches cutting me off. Yeah, so you would just uh, use it for your for your own needs. It's like a teleportation, but only you know for that. Yeah, I mean that's pretty. That's that's short sighted, you know. Oh, oh, sorry. I didn't realize we we're gonna have a whole like world saving discussion. Is no, this where you're going with this? Well, I, you know, I have. If you find a way to save the world with it, that'd be great. Well, where are you going with it? I, I don't know. I thought well, was... here's what I was doing with it. Mm-hmm. I put a portal at. I rent out a, a room, like an office building. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I lease out an office called the Krasny Travel Agency. Mm-hmm. Then I take a trip to Hawaii and I take a hotel and I put a portal there and I come back home in my little office and then I open up I open up shop. I set up shop. And then the shop is take a trip to Hawaii right now. Right the second. One day Hawaii vacations. You're you're in and out. money. You're in for the money. Money, man. Yeah, yeah. you make a make a business out of uh, you letting people use your portal. Well, then they find out about your portal technology, they snatch a gun, and then you don't have a gun anymore. The government's yeah, taking it. That could happen. The yeah. go- that's, that, you know, right, that discussion does happen. So yeah. then the government finds out what you're doing. Yeah. And they're like, it's your gun, though. You found it. Can they take it from you? Yeah, of course they can take it from you. The goddamn government. Yeah, they can do it. Safety, those security pieces, needs, whatever. Those pieces of yeah, shit. The terrorists will get it. So, yeah, yeah, think about it. If you had a portal gun, what would you do with it? Think about it. I'd, keeping with my short sightedness. Yeah. I'd set one up by the fridge and then set one up where I'm sitting. Like if I'm watching football on Sundays, I got one next to my couch and one by the fridge. And instead of having to get up to get a new beer or a new drink. In your house? Yeah, in the house. Just don't getting up so much work sometimes. Like put know? the portal in the fridge. Yeah. And you can better. just you can just put your hand right in there. But no, but then the cold would leave the portal. Yeah, yeah, even right. door yeah so just next to it so I could throw it open, grab one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I'd also, if I wanted to punk somebody good, there's a, you know, the garbage chute where they dump all the garbage in my apartment. Put that right there back in there, put it into somebody's house? Yep. So they just, garbage goes into their living room? When they sleep, garbage goes right in their face when they sleep. <laughs> God, I mean, that's a, that's a you gotta one. get in their house first, though. Whatever, like, I'm here right now, I pull one in your ceiling, you wouldn't even know about it. Why would you do that to me? I wouldn't, that's my point. Uh, you know what kind of cool is, like, you jump off a building, and then you set the, you just throw the, like, it's just in the game, like in the game. One really cool thing in the game is it carries the momentum. The, so, yeah, so yeah. you just jump off a building, and then right when you about to hit the ground, you portal the ground, and then you shoot out of the other portal, and you go really high up in the air. Uh, eventually, you end up in death, though. Yeah. And I know there's been videos made by people who, like, you know, their neighbors or roommates who get a get a gun, they fuck around with each other and stuff. But it'd be, it'd be fun. I'd, it'd be, you could do some really cool shit with it. I'm mad that I haven't thought of more, but like you now, now really you can cool think stuff. about it. I mean, there's some sick technology. It could like, if a lot of people have. You can get some really cool sports games. I feel like going with that. Oh, like portal ball. Yeah, like portal ball. Like that'd be really cool. You know, you like throw a football like into a wall, and then you throw a portal where the football go, and it I'm, shoots out of the wall. I imagine like a bat. Yeah. Oh, that'd be sick. Like yeah. I imagine also like a bat. You got angles. You got all the things going on. Basketball, Crazy. where like you jump off something, shoot one on the ground, shoot one over there, and like the momentum carries you, and you do a dunk like. 
it, yeah some really crazy shit like that you know? that'd be a good video game too be a cool movie like a movie thing portal basketball yeah hybrid thing oh god i'm sure people have modded portal to have some crazy shit like hmm. that if you haven't played portal though it's really funny i would highly recommend it it's it's pretty easy to get for it. very cheap now. the original is super it's on steam and actually i think this week they're doing an orange box sale which has portal oh. and a bunch of other shit for like five bucks good deal crazy. if you don't have portal you definitely got to get it yeah you at least watch the trailer it's a it's a great game. It's so funny. I just love the humor. I love a good a good funny game, which might be one of my future picks of the week. Not Portal, but something like it. Uh, let's move forward. I don't okay. have any, I don't have any other funny ideas. Uh, well, year. okay. So there's a this is about video games still. It's about I read an article on The Verge about uh, World of Warcraft as an addictive substance, mm-hmm. not a substance, but an, a real addictive issue. And there was a bunch of like interviews in it with people who really fucked up their lives playing World of Warcraft. Now. World of Warcraft is an MMORPG, massively multiplayer online RPG. So you can play it forever, and a lot of my friends have played it. It's kind of like about 20 years old at this point. Have you played it? I've never played it. I haven't either. I've seen it played. Yeah. I just, the whole uh, MMORPG thing kind of missed me. I never got into it. It just seems, I, I don't like things that are a time sink, that never have an ending. And that, yeah, then that's the issue. The yeah. issue is it is how bad it is, and then people get addicted to it. Now, I don't know if it's if it really. Here's what I'm. I have I have a funny aside of to this. Just go tell me. It. Yeah, when we were I was in college and we were on a road trip and I was with like four of my buddies we were going to uh, to a road trip, and we were all kind of bullshitting about stuff and we were some of the the topic of cocaine came up, and we were all like, oh, would you guys ever try cocaine? And we we're like, oh, you know, I, I wouldn't rule it out. We're not really interested, but like I wouldn't rule it out. And the next thing somehow was, would you ever do? Would you ever play World of Warcraft? And we were like, oh no, that's just addicting. We wouldn't fucking, we wouldn't mess with that. Like that was like the like you said it in reality, not like as a joke. No, no, we were all like, oh no, I, I don't have the time for that shit. Like I can't, I can't get into that. The money and the time. I wouldn't. It's just funny the how we went from that to that. But the like, thing for me is, is I have no concern that I get addicted to it. I mean, I, you know, it's not a phys- it's it's not physically addictive. No. Okay, it's only. The whole idea of mental addiction to me is kind of kind of shaky at best. Now there are things that are physically addicting. We're not. I'm. I agree yeah, with that. Like they really physically affect you. But yeah. like some things are just addictive, like psychologically. Well, anything can be ad- addicting. Yes. Mentally. And I don't really believe in that. And some people have personality types that are more prone to that. Mm. I call that weakness. That's what I call that. Fair enough. But like some, like I, for example, people who have a history of any kind of substance abuse in their family. Mm-hmm. Part of that is they have, like, specifically to that uh, thing, like, if you have a history of alcoholism in your family, those people will tend to have a higher rate of, like, having alcoholism, right? Like, having a, being prone to having trouble with alcohol. Yeah. But those people also have a tendency to just be highly addictive people to gambling, gambling no. to, to anything. Yeah, you know, yeah, you're it, right. It's, I a, just, it's a mental thing. I, I, it is. I just really don't, I don't really believe in it, to be honest. I you don't believe don't. In, in mental addiction? Mm-mm, I don't. I don't believe in it. I mean, you just got to not, not, not do that shit. Well, I mean, you can, I think you can overcome any, most things, right? Yeah. But, but everybody's got a different brain type, a different personality, different neuro, neurological wiring. Some people are wired a different way. And, and that wiring for a lot of people is that they're going to have a hard time with that, a harder than you. Like my, my mom's boyfriend is the same kind of guy, same intel as you do. And maybe it's a Russian thing where the Russians are like, we can do anything. You know, well, or, it is a Russian thing, yeah. for sure. But he's like, he's like, I wanted to quit smoking. I threw my pack away. Didn't buy one for a year. My dad, he, then he picked it. Yeah. But it's like, yes, a lot of people have that amazing ability. And I personally don't have an addictive personality. Like, yeah, I, I you mean. know, I, I can stop things and I, I'm very rational for a lot of things. But I know a lot of people who, who they don't have that extra step. And that's not, I don't think it's a, it's a, it, it is a, I don't want to say a weakness, but it's something just in the way they're wired. I think some where, of it where they can't just drop stuff. Some of it is, is kind of is a um, is a coddling. There's a level of it where it's like, oh, it's your you, you, your excuse could be that you're addicted to it. I agree that there's a different there's a difference. There needs to be accountability. Yeah. You know, like you can't just leave it at I have a, a dis- I think there was a South Park about this that I joked about like. Like, I have a disease. I, I'm an alcoholic. I have a disease. And he was like, I, he, Randy, uh, Stan's dad, was like, I do whatever I want. I have a disease. It's a disease. I can't do anything. He's like, no, you, you have a choice. Like, right. You can, you can seek help. You can go to AA. Like, yes, you, you might have a harder time with it, but there's still accountability to it. Yeah. 
So, you know, I mean, I don't, it's not, I don't think it's medically proven that video games are addictive in any yeah. way. And I don't think it ever will be because it's not, gonna, it's not something you can prove. I don't think video games are addictive. Well, you know, I, I think if, there are people. If anything can be addictive, then that's my point. Yeah. So I think there are people who have ad- addictive personalities, and video games are such a new thing that people don't think of them in that way. They don't think of something that they, they could become addictive, you know. So they're they're more prone to to falling into that trap. This is my my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. So like people, somebody who's like a really addictive personality in a rough life loses themselves in a video game world. And they throw everything else away. Well, video games aren't, aren't an addiction. They've just... They that's their that. addiction could of be, choice. Could be anything. Could yeah. be anything there. Could be poker. So then this, uh, the way the story ter- plays out is mm-hmm. they say, so Blizzard is the maker of World of Warcraft. Yeah. And all these people work really hard to quit playing. And they're like, I had to. I lost my job. I lost my wife. You know, all this stuff. And there's like, you know, these are like four interviews. of very. Mm-hmm. This is not everybody, obviously. But then they say, uh, recently, Blizzard released a, like a, a patch... That said, any character that's ever been deleted or, or like abandoned can be resurrected, like ever. So now everybody who quit the game and uninstalled it and everything, they can just get their character back, even though he was permanently deleted. But now they can like resurrect his character. So it's like that guy being like, "Hey, just get one more fix." Yeah. Come so they're saying yeah. like, if if World of Warcraft is really addictive, then Blizzard is like the most ruthless drug dealer <laughs> that ever ever lived. I kind of love that that image in my head of like Blizzard <laughs> yeah. being like, "Come on, buddy!" Like, uh, Blizzard's like, "Look, just we'll take, a give hit, you, take a hit, buddy. We'll give you your character back. Yeah, we'll get you one free dime remember, back here. Remember your old necromancer? No, yeah. we got him. We got him right here. <laughs> that good shit. That feeling you got that's, when you cast that's a funny. spell, man. I've never been addicted to it. To I want to say in anything. I've yeah. never been addicted, period. I, I I'm addicted to tea. Well, there you are. There you go. Maybe. Yeah. yeah I could probably I, stop. I mean, the... I can a, stop whenever I want. <laughs> it's very interesting, too, because like, you got to think, when at one point does something become an addiction? Yeah. Like, when does it go past the line of hobby or thing you enjoy? I mean, I, I, I guess I would say when it causes problems in your life, but... When it affects your regular yeah. life. But, like, uh, there are plenty of things that, like, will affect your life. You know, like, if you... If you have an addiction to work, if you work out a lot, if you're somebody who really is into working out, mm-hmm. well, that's good. Like you, yeah, you, sometimes you have to say, oh, I can't go out with my friends tonight because I got to wake up early and work out because I got a regimen, I want to I better my body. Mm-hmm. But are you, that's affecting your life, but at what point has it become an addiction mm-hmm. where you're hurting yourself? Yeah. You know, it, it, it is something to be aware of that I think a lot of people don't realize that you can be, become addicted to anything <coughs> and anything can affect your life, but you got to understand your limits and understand what what it means to be addicted in your own, in your mind. Speaking of addictions, yeah. you ever seen the show My Strange Addiction? No, I don't even. Never it. seen it. Don't even know what it is. It's a documentary show where people have really weird addictions, and then they follow them around and like do it. But you're like, what's a strange addiction, mm-hmm. right? Here's one: girl drinks nail polish, straight up, just opens a bottle of nail polish, drinks the whole thing. Like a shot. Like one shot of nail polish. Yeah, red. Her favorite flavor is red. Doesn't that hurt you? Like. You think so, right? Like, that must really be awful. She drinks one bottle of nail polish every day and has for, like, over 10 years. Wow. And she looks fine. Like, she looks fine. She's not, like, her hair's not falling out. Her skin's not all fucked up. So it's not really, I mean, it's it's a weird thing, but it's not really, I don't know, is it hurting her, I guess? What, well, okay, so she goes to the doctor. Like, yeah. the whole part of the show is they try to treat them, and yeah. they go to the doctor to make sure... So this happens every... I watch the show a lot because it's interesting as hell. Like, here's some of them. W- girl eats clay. Um, woman bathes in bleach. Um, woman eats plastic bottles. You're, I'm on the edge here. So what happens to this girl? So she goes to the doctor, and the doctor goes, oh, well, look at this x-ray here. It looks like you're kind of maybe... You possibly could be developing an ulcer. I'm like, oh, after 10 years of drinking fucking nail polish, you kind of maybe might develop an ulcer? Jesus Christ. What? What? That, that's nothing. Like, she should be her... She should have a mound of fucking hard lacquer in her stomach I'm right now. I'm very surprised by that, yeah. It's nothing. And then the woman bathes in bleach. She, like, takes a bo- like a gallon of bleach, dumps it in her bathtub, and, like, it's a really, really high concentration bleach. And she washes her whole house with bleach. She's obsessed with using bleach and everything. Her eyes are a little bloodshot. Like, mm-hmm. a little red, because there's bleach fumes in her whole house all yeah. the time. Otherwise, she's fine. Like, her skin is a little dry, and, like, she's pretty much normal, even though she bathes in fucking bleach. Girl, she- girl eats clay. It's fine. Like, she's fine. You're, the body can do anything. Yeah. So basically, nothing can hurt you, is what I got now, out of the show. Now, phys- yeah, physically, those are... That's very interesting. That's crazy. It's nuts. That's fucking nuts. Check the show not, out. Watch the show. It's, uh, on, it's on Netflix. Physically, yeah, you're right. There's Nothing's hurting you there, I guess, really, apparently. It's insane. But if you're, like, in a relationship, if you're with your friends, like, that that might be something that, that hurts your social life. So, like, it does have an effect on you, I what, guess. What, but, you know, what, what really 
made me pause yeah. about this. Like, here I am worried about, well, I wonder what, you know, xanthan gum is doing to me. Or what yellow five. Like, ingredients in food that people worry about. And here's people just eating clay, eating this, shit they tell you this, is poisonous. This girl eats plastic wow. Avion bottles. She just nibbles on the bottle throughout the day and eats the entire fucking thing. And she's fine. She eats plastic. Wow, what channel is this on? It's on Netflix. Oh, oh, it's on A&E. Shit. Is what channel it's on. You know, that, that's the thing. Is like, you're, you're somebody I noticed who watches these, like... It kind of documentary reality shows on Netflix. Mm-hmm. I don't do that. I when I'm on Netflix, I watch sh- sh- you know make cable shows. I watch shit that's like made. I for, do that too. Yeah, fair enough. But like w- having cable again, like having actual like TV, turn the TV on, turn cable on. You have it. I just got it for the first time in like seven years. Okay, I find a cable. I love all these, like these trashy shows and like I look. I love you know the fucking the good shit, the Breaking Bad, like that Bird Collar show. The what? Duck Dynasty. No, I don't watch that. But, like, I'm just saying, it's nice to, like, Catfish. Catfish is a great fucking show that, like, I would never have watched without cable. But I love Catfish, man. Is Catfish that where they, like, lie about their their dating profiles? Yeah, like, it's, like, some girl who's, like, really, like, 400 pounds and she... Should, what's like, the game on that? Like, what's the... what's the? Well, so, actually, it's interesting because this is what I... I thought the show was just, like, exposing these people who are, you know, being horrible human beings. Yeah. But it's kind of cool. They actually do a really good job of it. They, like... They'll they meet the person who's like I think I'm being catfished, I think the person I'm talking to online is fake. Okay. So then the people come, they meet the person, they go, all right, let's research and figure out if this person is fake or not. Let's track them down so we force them to meet you. And sometimes it's just like it really is that person. It really is that picture. It really is them. Uh, it's just a weird circumstance where they haven't met yet, and it's been weird shit, right? But then a lot of times it's a fake person, and instead of just being like fuck you, I got you, uh, you're a horrible person, how can you do this, bye. They talk to them, they're like, you know, why are you doing this? What's going on? And, they're like, and eventually the person will usually break down and be like, you know, I, I'm not happy with myself, I almost killed myself, this has kind of gotten me through everything. Like, they're, they're trying to help these people through their issues. Okay. So it's partial, uh, like, sleuthing, detective work, and partial kind of helping these people who have these issues who are, why are they doing this? Hmm. But it's interesting. It's, it's, it's fun to watch. It's I've heard of that show. I yeah. should check it out. It's something I would never watch on Netflix, but I with cable, it's like it's easy to turn on real quick. I love, man, Kevin Cable's. My Strange show. Addiction is something you can watch on Netflix. That's the like, kind of, I, I might have to check it out. You watch these people do weird shit and like be fine. It's crazy. Fucking weird, man. Let's, let's move on. We, let's change gears. Yeah. Let's change gears talk about Pepper. Now I'm going to tell you guys a step, story. Step Pepper? I'm going to tell you guys a story. Yuri knows a story already because this happened about a year ago with me. But I was th- I was imagining imagine this imagine you're a caveman all right oops and you're walking around and you're eating apples and pears and peaches and shit you're like these I like these fruits that grow out of these trees they're great you bite into them and they're yummy mm-hmm. a peach a plum mm-hmm. a grape I could eat a peach for hours then you, face off then you run into then you run into a, a, a habanero pepper you're a caveman you're like oh look at that, look at that pretty green plump little thing you grab it you take a big bite out of it. And then you're, you know, obviously you're fucked. You fucked up. You fucked up. You bit into a fucking fireball just now, and now your mouth hurts, your throat hurts, your eyes are watering, your nose is running, your ears fucking bleed, and you're eating a habanero, you're fucked. You go back to your tribe, and you're like, guys, I ate this plant. Don't eat that plant. Never eat it, again. it can only hurt you, okay? Yet, we still, like, somehow went back to it and go, you know what? We're going to try again. We're going to try just taking a little bit of it, adding it to our corn or whatever the heck they were doing and it ended up being like a thing. And now we have habanero peppers and we put them in all of our food. But somebody had to take a bite out of that and like somehow still come around to eating it again. Which got me to thinking, the way fruit works, fruit works because why do we have fruit? Why does fruit exist? It exists because plants want their seeds to spread. So they make delicious fruits and then, uh, you know, an elephant will walk by and go, oh, apple. And they'll eat the apple and then they'll go and poop the seeds out somewhere else. Yeah, to some extent, see, or fruits are sentient. They're not like alive and like thinking, but the the through evolution they've created this mechanism to to reproduce to to exist. Yeah, well, I don't want to say sentient, but yeah, whatever. But the, like their their method of reproduction is to be consumed and transported. Yeah, that's the method. You know, like bees bees take pollen, animals eat fruit. That's what it's all about. So why is a is a pepper have this defense mechanism where instead of wanting to be eaten? It does not want to be eaten. Are you going to talk about what peppers do to the brain? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Uh, well, it's not so much the brain, but yes, your body. So here, I, I want to research it. I'm like, why Why would peppers make this defense mechanism against being eaten? How do they spread their seeds? They, they don't, like, dogs aren't going to be eating jalapenos. They don't want it. It no. smells like it's spicy. They don't eat that shit. No. So I had to do some research. Why are peppers spicy? What's the deal? 
here's what happens, okay? Peppers have this chemical called caspase, caspasin or ca- capacin. That's the, the I think capacin sounds right. Capacin or caspasin, whatever. Yeah. I don't remember exactly. It's something with starts with a C. That's what makes it hot. It's a, an enzyme in the pepper that makes your a human or a mammal's uh, body feel like it's burning. It actually triggers a reaction in the brain. Just the way like certain things trigger dopamine, you know, like a pleasure center, it triggers your pain center. Mm-hmm. So a pepper is actually saying to your brain, you're in pain. even though you're not, even though you're not actually being hurt, it triggers in your brain saying, you're, you're hurt, you're being hurt, you're being hurt right yeah. now, don't do this again. And it feels like a burn. Yeah. So a pepper feels very much like you're being burned and your bo- that's what your brain thinks and that's what it does to you. Now, it's important to remember that it it, it is not actually burning you. Your body is thinking it is. I um, know if you get in your eyes, it does it does it does affect your eyes and yeah. like your you know some things, but like it doesn't actually hurt. It only feels like it is, which I mean it actually is. It is tricking your brain more. Or less. Yeah, but yeah. it's not actually affecting your body. Yeah. Like you're not gonna get like real serious blisters from a yeah. pepper ever. Um, birds do not interact. Like they have no caspasin doesn't affect birds. Well, so you when you told me the story a long time ago, you were saying I wonder how, if seeds if fruits are meant to spread their seeds, mm-hmm. why would fruits develop in such a way mm-hmm. that they uh, counteract this, like to keep people from eating them? Like how, how does that work, and how do they spread, and how do they survive? Yeah, and then so then it turns out birds do not are not affected by this chemical. So birds can eat these peppers and not care. A bird can eat a ghost chili. And eat ten ghost chilies, and it have no effect on their little body. Which I thought was very interesting. It's super interesting. Yeah. So mammals will not eat peppers in like you know ro- ro- rodents, but birds will, and the birds will go and carry the seeds around. So these fruits evolved for for specifically birds to carry their their things around. Isn't that interesting? I thought it was. I think you're a crazy son of a bitch, but I like that you looked into it. It's this. super interesting to yeah. me. So then I, I was thinking, here's what I thought when I was a little kid in middle school. This is unrelated, but it's still pepper related. Mm-hmm. It's a different story. Little kid, middle school, big afro, your beautiful head of hair. I had a beautiful head of hair. Yeah. Uh, I, I, what I, the way I thought, black pepper. You know how it's made? No. Do you know? If I asked you right now, how, if I was your kid, I'm like, Daddy, where's black pepper come from? What do you tell me? I say, oh, son, I don't know dick about shit. Okay, well, I thought, here's what I thought. Yeah. I thought they took a habanero pepper or a jalapeno and they charred it. They burned it to, a, to ashes. Then they crushed it up and that's what black pepper is. Seems pretty stupid to be honest. It's not that stupid. I think about it. That makes sense. You take a hot pepper, you burn it into black, and then you get pepper flakes. That's black pepper. I would... Okay, well, fair enough. So I would assume you take a different... Just a... There's a pepper, some kind of pepper, and you dry it out, and you... Grind, what makes it black? You run it up. I don't know. It's just a... It's a black pepper. Dries out. It's a dried off black, black pepper. Okay, well, now we know there are such things as peppercorns, which you, you are familiar with. Little Pe- black peppercorns. Like peppercorn ranch. Yeah, you know, they're black. They're in pickles. You can see them floating at the bottom. Black little berries. They're black, hard little balls. They're mm-hmm. the peppercorns. Mm-hmm. A peppercorn, a grinder grinds peppercorns into black pepper. Yeah. That's what black pepper is. It's out of a peppercorn. That came up with that now. Step peppercorn. So I'm, like, so I'm like, what the hell is a peppercorn? What the fuck is that thing? A seed? Is it a nut? Is it a seed of a cherry? Is it like, what is a peppercorn? So I'm like, I got to figure this out. So I look this up. And why is it called pepper if it's not a pepper? Okay? So it's not a pepper. It is not a pepper. It's a whole different thing. Well, the, the plant is called a pepperine something or other. But it doesn't have the same reaction. It's not the, at all. It doesn't cause the same thing in your brain as those other Absolutely peppers. no relation to a pepper that we're familiar with, like uh-huh. jalapeno. They grow like grapes, and they're like pepperine little things. They look like a grapevine, and it's got a bundle of green fruits on it. They take those off. They boil them. They dry them out. They become black little hard peppercorns. Then they grind those up. That's pepper. Now, those are from the, like, the uh, Asia Europe had this. Europe had these forever. Okay, so there it's a, it's an Asian plant that is pepper. Okay, so why are we calling fruit pepper pepper? That's the thing. Here's why. Our boy Christopher Columbus, who who's done so much for the world. Don't call him my boy. Yeah. yeah, he's done so much for the world. One of the things he's done for the world is he went to America, and now peppers like jalapenos and habaneros they're indigenous to America. Europe did not have them. All these fruits grow in like the Aztec, the whole that whole Mexican area. He found the peppers, and he ate them, and he goes, you know, these things have the same kind of spicy feeling that black pepper gives me, but much more intense. And he goes, they must be the same. What if... I think Christopher Columbus was the stupidest person alive. Well, I mean, they do make you feel spicy. Yeah, but if you if you look at Christopher Columbus's history... Okay. He's been a, basically a whole human being yeah. who has gone, like, like, 
accidentally stumbled on places, named everything wrong. Yep, he did that. Yeah, and then created like a whole horrible genocidal uh, chain of events that have like been shitty. He might be the worst person ever. Kind of, yeah. That's there was a, there's been multiple uh, like groups like trying to get rid of Columbus Day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would agree with that. We don't have a fucking Hitler Day. It's just it's just kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah it's kind of crazy we that have, there's no Genghis Khan Day. There's no Stalin Stalin festival. He's maybe not as bad as that, but uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, how many how many did he kill? He started genocide. Yeah, pretty he, much. He did, and and everything he did was like the reason we call like Native Americans Indians Cause is because Christopher Columbus thought he landed in India. He thought you could travel around the world from where they were in Europe to uh, the other side of the world by boat because everybody thought the world was flat. This is the story, I guess. And you would land in India. So he thought when he landed in America, what is now present-day America, he, he actually landed in India, but it was obviously not. Yeah, I mean, he didn't know better, though. He didn't do it on purpose. No, I, like, th- that's the point is he, he was an idiot. Kind of stupid. I mean, he was ahead of it. I mean, he was smarter than most people because he, instead of being afraid of running off the edge of this ocean, uh, edge of the earth, he, yeah. he thought he can go around. I guess that was the one, the one, uh, if that's true even, that's the one thing he did. Yeah. Correct. I mean, yeah, he didn't know. Then, he didn't yeah. know, but. But then you're right. He started this whole fucking he, genocide. He killed a lot of, but yeah, so the same thing. He thought it was India. Mm-hmm. So he thought he went to India and he found pe- pepper. And he's like, oh, this is, what they, this is what the peppercorns come from. This is what they are. So he named them peppers, and he brought them back to Europe, and then they, they're called peppers. So now they're called peppers, even though they're totally unrelated. Now, black pepper has a different chemical. This, it still gives you that spicy feeling, but it's not caspasin. It's, a, it's pepperin. Mm-hmm. It has a different element. But that's interesting that they're totally unrelated to each other. They do a spicy feeling, but peppers are indigenous to North America, and Christopher Columbus brought them back to Europe, and they're very spicy because only birds eat them. That is interesting. I love the bird, the bird fact. Love that really bird story. Love it. I like that you will delve into something that doesn't make sense to you. You got to figure that shit out. Because I don't give a fuck. I go whatever. You're like whatever, pepper. Yeah. How's it? How's it made? Yeah. How's it work? Yeah. Uh, got to know. This is if you're in the the Minnesota area. Uh, this isn't for you. I'm sorry. But I'm there's from a area. well, you'll there's a wing place, a a, a wing place, chicken wings. B dubs? No, no. It's called the D spot. It's in Oak. <laughs> it's in Oakdale. The D spot. It's just called D spot. Uh, they have these wings that are so hot you actually have to pass like a, a series of rankings of trying other lesser hotter wings to get up to them. And the way they make them is they actually they f- they take uh, these like really hot peppers, they freeze them and they let them heat back up. Because when they l- when they let them get back heat back up, the what do they call capacitance? Capacitance. Yeah. Cap- capacitance. 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 Whatever. They shatter and they quadruple in spice. So these wings they have are actually not found in nature, the, the heat level, mm-hmm. because they have to chemically create such a hot wing. That's Isn't that interesting? Man. It's nuts. I've seen people eat them. I've seen people eat the third hottest. I wonder what, uh, the, the, they measure heat in Scoville units? Yeah. I wonder how many they are. They're, I, I can look it up with you and show you, but they're hotter than a ghost pepper. Much hotter than I think ghost peppers are eight hundred thousand Scoville units. They're way hotter than a ghost pepper. They go above that. Jesus. Yeah. There was a there was actually at the Mall of America, which is a Minnesota mm-hmm. staple here. There was a hot sauce store. This is probably ten years ago. It's not there anymore. Yeah. But it was just a store that sold only hot sauces, and they had this I one. Remember that? I think. Yeah, and they had this one store. And they let you try anything. You can go in there, put in a little saltine, and mm-hmm. then try it. And they had a drinking fountain right in the middle of the store, even though a drinking fountain doesn't help you. <laughs> yeah. It's- it makes you feel better. There's one for milk. Mil- a milk fountain. Milk, That'd yeah. be funny if it was a milk fountain. That would be good, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, they had this... Uh, and in there, they had this uh, different sauce. There's one called the, the Bomb, which was, you know, like a million Scoville units. I think like I definitely remember this. Yeah. And I, I tried the Bomb, and it was... I mean, it, it, it's there's a warning on the package, and it's like, this is not a sauce. This is an additive. And their whole thing is like, you put one drop into a, a tub of chili. You don't like put this on a chip because yeah. it's like it's It'll too hot. You know what I mean? You, yeah. But yeah, so I tried the bomb and it was very hot and it's like a slow starter. You know, like you know, like oh, it doesn't taste like anything. It has no flavor, and then it just starts to fucking burn your mouth and burns your whole head and you start turning red. How how are you with spices? Can you handle spices pretty well? I'm pretty good, you know. And, and I noticed that the different like different spices affect me differently. It I think well, a, also a great story is uh, you worked with a lot of guys who were from Mexico. Back yes. at your old, one of your old At the jobs. pizza place, yep. yeah. And they could handle some really hot like, peppers, like some habanero. Yeah, these guys, they sneer. They they're like, oh, is that too spicy for you? They laugh. They eat everything. They're like, oh, hot peppers. But I then you shit. gave them, like, Russians love, like, like spicy mustard. Like mustard. horseradish mustard. We like horseradish. It's like the, if you eat sushi, it's like wasabi. You know, yeah. it kind of gets that sinus burn. Yeah, and the brand is called, it's called mother-in-law. 
Yeah. Because it's bitter, yeah. right? That's the whole thing. I love that. So it's perfect. Uh, it's perfect. It's this Russian mustard with this old lady on it, and mm. my, my dad was like, he they love this. It's gorka. It's yeah. it's very intense mustard. Garchitsa. Yeah. 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 It means bitter, literally, yeah. and it like it gets your nose. You know the wasabi feeling. It really well, yeah, fucks that, you that, up. That high sinus burn. It's spicy, but it's different. It's a different burn. Yeah. I mean, it's totally different. You yeah, know, it's not even totally. pepper. But yeah, so these, uh, you know, we're, we're having a sandwich with these Mexican friends, and, mm-hmm. and my dad's like, you know, this mustard, try it out. Yeah. And this guy starts slathering the mustard on, our boy Alfonso. Yeah. And it's he's putting it on way too heavy. And I'm like, and my dad's like, Alfonso, you take it easy with that. It's very hot. Like, and Alfonso's no. like, hot, oh, it's too hot. <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> and then he took a bite out of his sandwich, and he was like in tears. Crying, yeah. He's like, what is this poison you gave me? It's insane. <laughs> Because it, it's not it's not a pepper it's a it's not a spacing based yeah it's a it's, whole different it's thing. horseradish yeah. a whole different deal but they get you get immune to it you know, get used to it my buddy Anthony worked with this this guy at 3M and one time I went to lunch with him with this hit my buddy and this guy mm-hmm. we went to this Thai place and this guy these people fascinate me so much so I'm talking about all this kind of these what do you mean these people people who can handle very hot spices okay. so anybody like Indians but, and well he Mexicans is he he and... does happen to be Indian but like anybody who can handle like these really crazy high level spices right yeah. And we're sitting there at this Thai restaurant. This is like kind of a hole in the wall, like very, uh, like home 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 run Thai place. Okay. And he goes to the to the waitress and he goes, "Listen, uh, I know you're probably gonna give me like I want the hottest you can make me. I'm no American, got it? Yeah. And I know you're probably gonna give me like something normal, but like I want you to make it as hot as you can make it. Take a step back and make it hotter than that. I want you to pretend like you hate me. Why is this? Why is this guy doing that? Because like he he can. He can't enjoy food unless it hurts him? What's his deal? He, look, well, spice, like, you know, you look at spicy food every now and then, right? Yeah. It has to be, like, crazy spicy for this guy to, to get, get that effect. To get that effect. He's got the, to, he's an immune, Jones and It's he's an immunity. Jones yeah, pretty it. much. Okay. okay. So, like, they bring it out, and, like, I see him eating it, and he's kind of like, by the way, this, this is whatever the five-star rating is, plus a million, you know, a million for, like, the home. Plus a challenge. Yeah, plus a challenge. <laughs> I've got a two-star, and, you're and my boy Anthony has a three-star. Okay. And Anthony's sweating so hard. He's pretty good at spice. Anthony's sweating so hard he has to like wipe his brow and bite. <laughs> I'm like getting a little little heated up. Yeah, yeah. And this guy's just like he finishes his bowl. He goes, "You made a good you made a good effort, but I'm I can, not. I can I'm, handle it. I can ha- yeah, I can handle it. It's crazy. These people fascinate. I got a guy at work. Yeah, he's an Indian, yeah. an Indian like from India. Like, yeah, legit Indian. Same guy. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, give me. We go to like the Thai place. They like, give me the hottest thing you have. I love like, that. The hottest. I want to just take this guy to different places in the in the country and just be like, nuts. do it. Was I saying something? Uh, not, not just c- c- yeah the mustard. And I was stuff. saying that different like di- like I can eat, drink Tabasco sauce yeah. at this point. Not that that's I'm not like a claim to fame. It's, mm-hmm. it's not that big deal, but like. There was a time where I thought it was really hot, and I put a few drops in my eggs. Now I can take a shot of Tabasco and well, like, for, I think for, it, for a couple bucks. I think it actually does kill your taste buds. Maybe it, it immunizes. You know, like it, it kills the sensitivity a little bit. Yeah. To where you can get better at it. Hmm. Is that a? I don't. It's not a physical thing though. It must be a brain thing. I think it's a physical thing. Well, I think your ta- your taste buds. I, no, because it's not a physical interact. It's not a physical. Uh, um, but if your taste buds, oh, I guess you're right. It's not. Like your brain burning, just says, yeah. okay, this is not real. Hmm. But like at Chipotle, they have the the hot. A Chipotle? Yeah. I can't handle that stuff. By the way, I'm done with Chipotle. What do you mean? I'm... Chipotle's fine. I'm over Chipotle. I'm all Qdoba now. Oh, that place is money. You know You know what they just did? No. Guacamole is free now. Get the fuck out. I'm only going there. Yeah. You can... They're, they're, it was so funny because I'm in line... Free I'm in, guac? I'm in line and I'm getting a, a burrito bowl, you know, like a naked bowl or whatever. Uh-huh. And I... My girlfriend goes and they're like, by the way, uh, guac is included now. Is that okay? And she goes... What do you mean? And they go, well, we're it's not... It's not fifty extra? Yeah, we're not charging for it. Is that fine? And like, I love how they're doing it. Like, clearly, this is what they tell them to do. But, like, yeah, obviously, it's fine. Like, if the guac is free, I'm not going to be upset. Give me that green... So, yeah, the guac am- is free there. Give me that green ambrosia, son. So, go there, get a, get a whole veggie thing, and the guac is free now. It's included. Emily, we're going free. to Cadoba. Yeah. So, Qdoba is killing it. And they, I love their queso. Free their guac? Queso, their queso... They, you do a queso burrito. Qdoba just has overtaken Chipotle, my and they're not sponsoring this podcast. No, I, this I, is out of the goodness of our heart. God, I wish this they is would. a pick of the week. I wish they would. Yo, pick, Kodoba, I, I, if you're listening, you can give us sponsorship. Yeah, we'll pick promote of the week. your shit. That's awesome. Yeah. So anyway, m- let's move on from the pepper topic. I think it's really interesting. I love that. I I thought it was really cool that you looked that up. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Thank I, you very much. If you know, if you're one of the people who can handle those crazy spices, props to you. Uh, so let's move on a little bit here to well, uh, uh, let's just go uh, the picks. We should go to picks. Yeah. Let's go to picks of the week. You got some picks. I have very few picks. You got some picks, though. Yeah, I, I kind of threw these on. Uh, last night, I watched... Uh, it's October. You know, Halloween's coming up. So yeah, I, I'm trying... To, I'm not a big, like, horror movie guy. 
But like uh, around this time, I kind of try to get more interested. What's your favorite horror movie before we even go? My favorite horror movie? Yeah. It probably doesn't count as a horror movie, but I love Cabin in the Woods. You didn't like it as much. It, it this this is more of a meta a sci-fi of, horror meta movie. Yeah, it's not really a horror movie, so I, I, I guess I wouldn't count that. Uh, well, it's, I mean, it is, it's close it, enough. It is. It is. That might be my favorite, like quality, pure. This is a great movie. Movie. My favorite, like series, like a, the classic horror movies. I think Freddy. I think Nightmare on Elm Street. Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, yeah, I love the. Love it, man. I love that. And then, uh, as far as just a couple spatterings here and there, I, hmm. I I really liked The Conjuring last year. The Conjuring was a really good horror movie. That's I don't a good think I saw one. that. It's like an exorcism type uh, type of movie. That was really well done. A- Annabelle's kind of a spinoff. It's on theaters right now. It's about just like a, a portion of the movie. It's about a, a killer doll. Uh, by the oh, way, I, when I was a kid, Chucky. Chucky, I used to have so many nightmares. That was a scary motherfucker hey, back when we were kids. I know you think, let me just tell you right now, to parents out there, I know you think your kids will, will probably be okay with horror movies, and they're going to tell you they'll be fine. Mm-hmm. And who knows, maybe one in every every few kids will be just totally fine. They can watch a horror movie and be okay. I told my parents I'd be fine. When I watched a Chucky movie, and oh, Leprechaun also, <laughs> the movie Leprechaun? <laughs> Leprechaun. God, the fucking movies. When I was a kid, I had nightmares about these movies for years, for years. Oh, even though, like, God. even though the looking back, they're not even scary movies. Yeah, right? I watched Chucky recently. Like that movie is garbage. It's so stupid. It's That's funny. Scared, it's a joke. It scared fuck. Scared oh, the fuck out of me, man. Haunted my childhood. I remember. Yeah. I, I still remember two different nightmares I had from my childhood. I don't remember anything nowadays. But I remember two distinct nightmares that I had about Chucky when I was a kid. God damn. Those movies terrified me. Yeah. Uh, but so horror movies. I watched uh, woman, The Woman in Black last night. I never heard of this. It's it's on Amazon Prime, if you have Amazon. It's starring Daniel Radcliffe from the Harry Potter. He's Harry Potter. Okay. Yeah, it's his first movie after the Harry Potter series. It's a it's a good movie. A bit of a weird ending. Uh, actually, kind of a really weird ending. It's part of the reason I want to talk about next week, about uh, book adaptations to movie adaptations, from books to movies. But this week I'll just say that it was a, if you like a good classic kind of ghost story with some jump scares, some really like like a tense setting, some tense like moments, it's a good classic old school uh, ghost story. I really mm-hmm. like it. And he was good in it. I, I enjoyed it. It's, it's a pick of the week for me. Okay. You got any other movies? No. Uh, also, I want to say, if anybody's seen, this is a movie I want to see coming up here, but The Baba Duke. It's an Australian horror movie. I've heard really good things about it. Yeah, I saw it. That's a weird name. I yeah. remember it. I remember it. I want to watch it really bad. I really... I, I I like good things. Even if it's a horror movie, which is not a genre of mine, but I hear it's really good. So I want to watch The Babadook. B-A-B-A-D-O-O-K. One word. So if, you, if you've if you seen it anywhere, if you think it's good, if you want to tell me about it, please give us feedback. Uh, the other movie I watch is also kind of part of October, part of Halloween, is Rounders. Is, has influenced my Halloween costume. Oh, tell me about it. Yeah, so Rounders is a movie... By the way, what does this mean watch Rounders? Um, probably this year once. Really? I haven't seen Rounders since I was... I make in, it a point to watch it all the time. Yeah, I haven't seen Rounders since I was in college. I haven't watched it in a long time. I used to love it. I've seen it like 20 times, but I haven't watched it in a long time. I've seen it over 100 times. I always forget he's in law school in that movie. Yeah, yeah, he's in law school. Yeah, he's a fucking law school student. By the way, weirdly accurate depiction of law school in that movie. <laughs> Like, really is that annoying. Like, the people in it are that douchey and pretentious. Like, it's great. I don't know why it's too ruined. But Rounders has Matt Damon, one of his first movies. He's, uh, like, a, a poker player, and it's, like, this whole... Like, if you like poker, it's your movie. I mean, you probably already seen Rounders. Yeah. It's classic. But uh, if you've seen what I look like, if you looked at... If you ever watched the YouTube Watch video, it on YouTube now. I'm... My Halloween costume this year, I think, is going to be te- Teddy KGB. I mean, it's perfect. That sounds great. Yeah, it's great. I'm really Track excited for suit. it. Tracksuit. Like a young man coming in for a quick... He's got alligator blood. I feel so unsatisfied. <laughs> I'll L- splash the pot whenever the, the fuck I please. Lays down a monster. <laughs> the fuck you do that for? <laughs> the fuck you lay that down? Yeah, I love that movie. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, that's, 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 that's a pick good. of the week. If you haven't watched it in a while, if you've never watched it, definitely check it out. Yeah, watch Rounders. That's on Amazon out. as well. Come so, on, man. Streaming. So you got some... You played XCOM. Yeah, so you brought last week you brought it up. I mentioned that I downloaded it for like pennies on the dollar and how much is it i don't where'd know where'd you get it from look i'm i'm my jewish blood when i see a deal i always check these xbox so you already had it yeah i already had oh it. you just didn't play i downloaded it. like six months ago you saw the value got it yeah never I, played it. i always do that i know yeah. how that goes i go i oh four dollars yeah i gotta download that so i downloaded it for like four dollars probably six months ago never played it and then you're kind of you kind of inspired me i love it it's so fun it do you know how much you know about it I mean, I know it's a turn-based strategy game where you're, like, investigating alien crash sites. Yeah, kind of a t- 
it, strategy, tactical strategy. There's really strategy. no story to it, which I'm fine with. Really? I like, yeah, I mean, the story is that aliens invade. Maybe there'll, there'll be a story along the road. Mm-hmm. But aliens invade, and you're part of, like, a secret... Uh, yeah, XCOM, the, the Men in Black. Yeah, Men in Black type thing. You know, they, the, the nations of the world hire you to deal with this. Mm-hmm. But it starts out, and, like, you've got a squad, right? Mm-hmm. And what the cool part is you can name your squad. So you name them and customize them and how they look and like what they... So I actually have Alex Krasny is on my squad. How am I doing? You're good. You just got promoted. You're a sniper. Great. You're a, you're a corporal. Awesome. You're doing really good. Awesome. I love it. So it's really cool. So like that's a lot of that fun. That is a lot of fun. Uh, in between, like, so you kind of scan in between missions and eventually you got a mission and you go and you... So you, you have like a squad of like five people and they all have like a different, uh, like especially like there's a sniper, an assault, and it's random how they get picked. And they're all from different countries, so you're Russian, obviously. Nice. I picked the Russian guy to be you. Of course. And then you move them around the map, and then like yeah, as you turn based, yeah. it's a tactical turn based. Exactly. Game. Yeah. So and it's so your thing is great. You think I really, should get it and try it? Yeah, it's really fun. And then in between missions, you have like uh, kind of the management. So I'm going to use your your triangle here. So mm. execution is very easy because you just literally hit this character, move here, mm-hmm. shoot that person, whatever. Yeah. Management is pretty high. Because mm-hmm. in between the missions, you manage your base, you manage what you want to build to like help people, you promote people, how, what you want to do with their money, you make a monthly income. Mm. It's almost like a little civilization-y. Yeah. So I would put that at like a 7, like mm. 70. The strategy is definitely yeah. high. And then strategy within the missions themselves is very high. That's like 8. Like I, There's two ways to play. You can either save every whenever you want. Fuck that for pussies. Or you can play a that's hardcore. That's for basic bitches. Hardcore mode. Yeah, that's what our boy, automa- Mash, yeah. our boy Mash says. you got to play the game hardcore. Automatically mode. saves every turn. If you lose somebody, they, they're they gone. Mm-hmm. They, they're dead. You cannot bring them back. You know, you cannot reload your save. That's hardcore. the cool one. you got to play it that way. I love that. So I had a really good time with it. It's really fun. I, I did not expect to get so into it. And I was immediately like, oh, fuck. It's like oh, two hours so gone. Damn. Yeah. So I got to get it. You would like it a lot, I think. Fuck. Uh, my other pick... Is I have a I have a 3ds I bought it again on a sale for like a hundred bucks uh, a long time ago. I'm a sucker for fucking sales, man. Hey, I mean when you get a sale, yeah, you're saving all the money. You know what I mean? If I if there's something you're thinking about down the road, you know, if you're like I'm gonna need to buy this, and as long as you're not like in dire you know straits where you can't pay your rent this month, like I always look at it and I go, well, I want to get it eventually. This is the time to do it. Like I, I bought a pair of jeans. I don't I don't need a pair of jeans right now, I, but. I need I need to buy one soon. I need a pair of jeans. Crazy sale. Bought it. Whatever. So anyway, I bought a, a 3DS a while ago. And there's a game for it. It's actually a, a DS game. So like a, the older generation of console. But it's all you still play it there? Yeah, it's all backwards compatible. Hey, good job, Nintendo. Yeah, I like... They always do that. So it's called 999. Nine persons, nine hours, nine doors is the full name. But you can just call nine it nine, doors. 999. Okay. It's... A visual novel mystery would probably be the best way to catch. I'm thinking mist, like mist. Kind of. So like, there's a like you start out, there's a story, right? Yeah, right? And you're part of the game is just kind of making like clicking through the story and making decisions about like where you want to go. And then the other part of the game is like escape rooms. So like, you get stuck in a room, and you have to like like solve puzzles, right? So you're like, click here, uh, grab this item. Use this item here, apply this item here, solve this puzzle, escape the room. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So that's part of the game. So you. It's get... a point and click adventure game. Kind of. Uh, but first like... person point and click adventure. Yeah, I mean, don't like like the bottom screen is like a first person. The top screen will show like the character who who's talking, and like what they're saying. You kind of go through whatever, right? Okay. But what's really it's really next level. I mean, it sounds basic, right? It's basic bitch. Yeah, but it's really fucking next level because the story is what makes it sick. You like it. Yeah, so it's... it's. I don't want to spoil anything because the story is the coolest thing. Don't spoil it. But you have to replay the game multiple times to get, like, the true ending. Hmm. And when you go through the story the first time, you'll die. You won't win. You'll lose. For sure. For sure. And then it restarts you, and you can skip through everything you've already done. And you take a new route in the story. Hmm. And then you get more information. But the coolest part is that it's... they. Exp- there's a reason. There's a story reason why you can keep doing this. Okay. Right? So, like, it, it's almost like like a Groundhog Day situation where you're le- reliving parts. That's not the plot, but I'm just saying, you, like, you... There's a reason why you can do this and why you, why it's happening. It's really great. The story's really cool. So it's a lot of fun. So, 3DS owners. And here's the best part, is this is, like I said, it's a 2DS game. I'm playing... The reason I brought it up is I'm playing the sequel to it right now. I downloaded the sequel for it. Really What's cheap. the sequel? Is it called 10 No. I wish it was. They fucked up. What's it called? It's a totally different name. I kind of oh. hate it. How do you it's know it's called a sequel, even? 
It is. I mean, what's it called? Zero Escape, Virtue's Last Reward. These are Japanese games that have been localized, the translations and shit. But the the 3DS is the same idea. It's like you play this game, you're like so basically to give you the a brief background of the plot is you get kidnapped and you get stuck in this like puzzle game. It's kind of like Saw. Oh, wow. Saw. I know it. So you get stuck in this puzzle game and you got to like escape or else you die. Right? So you got to like, solve the puzzles or else you're killed. And there's other people and you discover things. And it's like, very fun. If you like mysteries, if you like this kind of shit, it's also fun fact 999 is on iPad. Fun. Yeah, so if you have an iPad, if That's you, cool. How yeah. much is it on iPad? Uh like 5 5 to 10. How much is it on 3DS? I bought it on eBay for like 14. Is it like 50 though? No. How much are th- 3DS games? 3DS games new are like 40. So what is this game new? The old one? Whatever the one on iPad is. The iPad one's 5. No, th- not an iPad, on the 3DS. Oh, the new one I bought it for from the eShop. So from the the download store for 25 bucks. You see, it's I, I like how on iPad it's so cheap. Yeah, like, well, it, it's well, a weird thing. The sequel is twenty five to download, but oh. on iPad the old one is only like five to ten. Bucks. Oh, okay, okay, so twenty five on iPad. Yeah, it's so it's less than ten dollars on iPad for the old game. So if you have an iPad, that's another great way to play it. They just they really get her s- done, man. Just put it out. Really fun. Really liked it. Yeah, you have any anything? Well, G.I. I Joe? do. I have. Okay, so uh, if you guys play video games on the emulators, don't drink all that. We got to make a toast. Don't Got even it. put that down. Uh, if you play emulator video games, which you know I do, I play uh, you know all the Nintendo games. I've been doing it. I also like to look for like YouTube videos. What are the best hidden gems? Uh, GI Joe, as a Nintendo game, original Nintendo. GI Joe. GI Joe. There's also a sequel to GI Joe. Both of them are very good. Um, they're kind of Contra like, which is you expect GI Joe to be. Yeah. And they yeah. actually did it. So it's a licensed video game for GI Joe. And if you are emulating your games, I would I would say buy it on Nintendo. Sure, buy it. I don't know who's buying Nintendo games. I don't. I just emulate them, you know. Yeah. But yeah, uh, check out GI Joe. It's a cool little Nintendo game. It's really good. I love those throwback games. I like them too. I'll show it to you. It's pretty fun. Uh, That's all I got. I only got one pick. I got one last thing. I guess here. I'll you got another about. one. Yeah. So the TV thing. You ever seen the voice? The show. Yeah. Yeah. I really like it. Get the fuck. Out I know. I'm. I'm so far behind, but I've never seen it. And I, I. I watched the first time ever this week. The new season. I really enjoy it. It's like really good, really technical. I like the the judges have a good banter. Like, if you, have, if you have cable, if you have a significant other who kind of likes this shit... Look, man. It's way better than... American Idol's the worst. That show's for basic bitches. No, it's fun. I, I really enjoy it. Check it out. Can't agree. Let me know what you think on the feedback. You know what? Don't check it out. Speaking of feedback, here's our plugs. Uh, subscribe to us on iTunes. Subscribe to iTunes. Please give us a review. We like it. Yeah. Uh, Even if you give us a bad review, we'll like it. How give, about that? Give us five stars to boost our popularity. We prefer but, a good review. But... Give we, us five stars, but give us criticism within the five stars. We like we that. Give us five stars. Tell us we're assholes. But if you if you feel like a sellout, I'll understand. I won't. I won't. Hey, you don't need to do it. it. Yeah. Uh, follow us on Twitter. You don't even fo- do it. I got. Go to, I'm going to put little links in our in our images. Well, in case you're actually subscribing. Oh, yeah. you're right. Follow me at Yuri with a Y. That's actually the word, the name of the, the full thing. Yuri with a Y. That's the quotes. Yuri with a Y. Yeah. With a Y. So Y U R Y with a Y. And I'm Lex Krasny, like Alex Krasny without the A. Uh, yeah, and give us great. give us some feedback. Uh, you can email us feedback at avdpodcast at gmail dot com. Yeah, we like it. We'll or like you it. can hit us up in the YouTube comments, like you've been doing. Hopefully, we hit up YouTube comments. We address man. them. We got hey, some, we like discussion. We got some email feedback this week. We didn't get a chance to get any feedback. We're sorry about that, but yeah, we look. We appreciate the discussion. We read all of it. We read all of it. We even if it. you we disagree with you guys, even if we think. We get a little frustrated by we love it. To, I, I thrive on disagreements. I hope you know that we appreciate you putting the conversation out there and hanging us up with it. So we'll try to keep responding and keep getting If we it. don't talk about it, we'll never advance. Yeah. Hey, let's have... It's our 10th episode. Congratulations to you and me together. Congrats. We're going on. Uh, We're going to go to Taco Bell to celebrate and drink our brandy and have a great time. Sounds good to me. All right. Cheers.